Now, I want to go back to one of your uh, initial experience where you built two other e-commerce startups, right? And sure. then you sold them. Now, yeah. how do people identify, let's say, if I'm building a startup, when do you think is the right time to exit and maybe go somewhere else? Yeah, you know, it's... I, both those companies sold because I took them where I could take them. Like, honestly, it's I, mm. I had capped out and I didn't, you know, I, I wouldn't say didn't want to do it anymore. I just felt like the first company, Swag of the Month, we got to a point where we were working nonstop. We had bootstrapped the company. We could barely afford to pay ourselves. And we were too young. We didn't have like money sitting away. Like I love the companies like, oh yeah, I didn't pay myself for two years. It's like, okay, where did you get all that money? <laughs> like living for two years. I was 24 when I started Swag of the Month. I didn't have any money in the bank. So living on, like I had to pay myself and I had to pay, I paid myself the minimum wage out here, but it was still, you know, a burden on the company. And so we couldn't afford to hire people to help us. We were trying to scale. We were doing well top line, but we weren't making enough profit to cover everything. And so it got to the point that we either had to raise money, sell or shut it down because it wasn't sustainable. We were working, I, I hate to say, it, but we were working too hard and it just wasn't going to work. And so I, uh, so I ended up, so that's why we ended up selling. We got lucky. I tried to raise money, but I didn't know anything about raising money. And so I mm. talked to one VC who told me it was a great idea, but he just invested in something that could be a competitor. So he couldn't invest in us. And that was it. I was like, oh, well, the VC just decided we we're not going to raise money. Not realizing that it was like standard to talk to hundreds of VCs to raise money. I had no idea how to do that or that that was a thing. So literally the next week, uh, someone I knew reached out asking if I wanted to sell, which by the way, once you start building a company with attention, you get it every, all the time. People will mm. want to buy you all the time. Once you have that attention and that traction, I get several emails a week to sell Hawk media. Um, <laughs> Cause there's a whole, just, there's a giant industry around that private equity venture, et cetera. So, um, so that first one, again, we just got to a point where I had to raise money or sell and I got the offer. The timing was perfect. And I took it. The second one, uh, the original investors were, needed to get out basically. And so we found a great buyer I identified. And so that was another one that like, yeah, it was a good sell. And like, we got out of it, but I would say to anyone trying to think about this, it's, you know, when you sell, there's a few reasons to sell. One is you don't want to do it anymore, whether it's mm -hmm. you're retiring or you want to do something else, like you have something else to do, or you want, you just want out Two, you see that there's going to be sort of dark clouds in the future. Like, you know, your business is going to suffer and other people don't. And so that might be an interesting time to get out. Um, the people coming in, maybe you're not going to get out completely, but you're going to sell half of it to a partner that can help you take it way further. That's a lot of times interesting. And, and uh, you know, sometimes it's just the money. Like you can keep, there's risk and time, you know, like you keep going with your business. Yeah, it can grow, which by the way, you look at all the richest people in the world, they kept their businesses, at least a portion of them. So there's a reason to keep your business, but a lot of times you like you haven't made any money in your life. You're not making enough money. Like I see a lot of companies that don't cash flow very well. They build a huge business. Consumer businesses are like product yeah. businesses are notorious for this. They have to keep investing, reinvesting the money to grow, which means you can't take that much money out. And so you get five, 10 years, let's say, let's say 10 years into the company. You've grown a massive company, but you personally are still living in an apartment because you haven't been able to take much money out of the company. And someone comes in and says, I'll give you you know, hundred million dollars for half your company, you might be in a position that you should take it because now you've got your nest egg, your grandkids will be fine. You can still grow your company because maybe you own half of it. Like there's all, there's a lot of different reasons to do this, but I also think that there's also the idea, and this is how I built Hawk Media, maybe don't sell, maybe build a business that sustains a long time that you can keep running it, that you, if you ever want to, you can, but if you build that business, then you always have the option. And remember when someone's buying your business, their thesis is that they're going to make money on the money they buy it for. So they're going to give you $100 million, but they're going to make $400 million. And so by nature, well, why don't you just keep it and make that $400 million yourself? That's And that's, again, you have to determine whether a partner coming in is going to make you more money or you're better off taking that money and putting in something else, diversifying your assets, that kind of thing too, which is all, these are all the things that I've weighed and I continue to determine that I'd rather just keep Hawk Media. But I also, from almost the beginning, my partner and I decided like, we need this to be a long-term sustainable business. Mm. What does that look like from a lifestyle, from a personal cash flow, all these things. And, you know, regularly we'll have discussions like, uh, you know, both of us needed homes, wanted to, like we were living in an apartment still, but we figured out a way that we could finance that through our company and not in the way it's not as complicated as sound, but we had enough money that we could go buy houses, but it took years, but it's like, yeah. So now we're at the point that 
all our, I wouldn't even say basic needs, all our higher level needs, our cars, our houses, our travel, our lifestyles are covered. So it's, so when someone comes in and says, we want to buy you, it's like, well, I don't know why I'd sell. <laughs> and that's like, cause like Hawk's growing like crazy. We're, true, we grew true. 70% last year. We're probably going to grow another 70% this year. We'll probably, I think we're going to end the year with, you know, 500 plus people. Nice, why am nice. I going to give this to someone else? What, and where would my money be better served? So let's say I sell it. I take, I'm just using round numbers, but I take a hundred million dollars and I go put it into real estate or I go put it into stock market or crypto or whatever. I, I'm actually going to make more money most likely just keeping my money in my business. Absolutely. I like the part you mentioned here stating all the different aspects as to why somebody should sell right in the first place. It's not just one way wherein you're not yeah. just, let's say you have, you need the money, but also seeing, do you want to actually take it forward or not? Like what are the other parameters? And there's always another room where you can go ahead and do that rather than sinking with the boat, where you think you have no, because I, I know a lot of people that have invested effort and money and it gets really difficult for people to detach themselves from that uh, yeah. organization wherein you know the future may not be there right in the yeah. first place great 